Hello, and welcome to this lecture on the gut dysbiosis hypothesis of depression. This is Dr. Nicholas Hatcher, and in this presentation, we will examine how the gut microbiome influences psychiatric symptoms and illness. We will start with a general overview of the gut dysbiosis hypothesis. We will then move into a discussion of the relevant anatomy and physiology, as well as key contributors to gut colonization. Then we will examine the link between the gut and the brain, exploring the microbiota-gut-brain axis. Afterwards, we will pull this together in a model revealing the connection between the microbiome and psychiatric symptoms, as well as key psychotropic influencers. Finally, we will discuss some studies that support this hypothesis and give ideas about future treatment directions. The gut dysbiosis hypothesis states that abnormalities in the richness and diversity of the gut microbiota contribute to the symptoms of depression as well as other psychiatric illnesses through vagal, inflammatory, and neuroendocrine pathways. Interestingly, the gut and brain originate from the same tissue during embryogenesis, the neural crest. This underlies some of the interconnectedness between the gut and brain. The bacteria in the gut outnumber the body's cells 10 to 1, and this collection of bacteria is referred to as the microbiome. Gut bacteria have been estimated to consist of greater than 1,000 species and greater than 7,000 subspecies. One third of the microbiota are common among most individuals, while the rest differs. This gives us each a unique microbial identity. The intestinal barrier consists of multiple layers, the gut microbiota, a mucosal layer that contains digestive and antibacterial enzymes, an epithelial layer that acts as a physical barrier and contains enteroendocrine cells and immune cells, and the lamina propria, which also contains immune cells. A healthy person will have a diverse and stable collection of gut microbiota that help maintain the intestinal barrier. These symbionts can upregulate proteins that are important for maintaining tight junctions between epithelial cells. Also, their metabolism results in the generation of short-chain fatty acids, which act as trophic factors for the mucosal and epithelial barriers. There are several factors that influence the colonization of the gut. Some notable influencers include vaginal versus cesarean delivery, maternal and fetal infection, maternal and infant antibiotic, as well as other medication treatments, formula versus bottle feeding, food preservatives, environmental interaction, stressors, indoor living versus outdoor exposure, and sanitation practices. Some of the microbiome composition is also impacted by genetics. Finally, age, diet, physical activity, and other diseases influence the composition of the microbiome. It's important to note here that negative in utero and early life experiences alter initial gut colonization, which predisposes an individual to stress-induced inflammation later in life by the following mechanisms. One, establishing a hyperactive HPA axis. Two, altering immune system activity. Three, increasing intestinal permeability. And four, influencing epigenetic regulation. Early life experiences through modification of the gut ecology, magnify stressors, amplify the stress response, and inhibit corrective homeostatic mechanisms resulting in chronic sustained inflammation. This chronic sustained inflammation contributes to the pathogenesis of depression and is further described by the neuroinflammatory hypothesis of depression. An imbalance of the microbiota is referred to as dysbiosis. This imbalance results in an increase in gut permeability. The change in gut permeability results in the increased passage of microbiota and metabolic products, for instance lipopolysaccharides, abbreviated LPS, which can induce an immune response 
that includes the release of pro-inflammatory cytokines. These inflammatory signals can be transmitted via the vagus nerve to the brain, where they can affect neurotransmitter synthesis, neuroplasticity, neurogenesis, and neuroendocrine function. This suggests that dysbiosis could affect brain functions. There are three key connections between the brain and gut. We discussed the influence of cytokines on the central nervous system via the vagus nerve. These cytokines, as well as bacterial metabolites such as lipopolysaccharide, can also influence the central nervous system directly, especially in the setting of altered blood-brain barrier permeability, which occurs in an inflammatory state due to astrocyte interference. There is also communication via the HPA axis between the brain and gut, where cortisol is the key communicating hormone. The gut is also responsible for a significant portion of tryptophan and serotonin synthesis, which directly translates to the central nervous system and is implicated in depression. Here I've put together a model showing the relationship between the communication pathways and effects, as well as some key influencing factors. As you can see, the relationship is somewhat complex, but the key takeaway here is Alteration in the gut microbiota translates to neuroinflammation and hyperreactivity of the HPA axis, essentially contributing to a perpetual cycle of depression. In a review by Casado and colleagues, some key psychotropic influencers of the microbiome were discussed. These include antipsychotics, antidepressants, anxiolytics, mood stabilizers, opioids, coffee, tea, chocolate, drugs of abuse, alcohol, and tobacco. Here I've provided a table of some key pro and anti-inflammatory influencers to consider. The takeaway message here is to consider diet, exercise, sleep regulation, and smoking cessation as part of the treatment plan for individuals experiencing depression. In a study conducted by Berkik and colleagues in 2011, Bulb C, or anxious phenotype, and germ-free, or GF, Swiss mice were used to examine anxiety. Fecal matter transplantation, abbreviated FMT, from the more anxious Bulb C mice to the germ-free Swiss mice resulted in a reduction in exploratory behavior, denoting anxious behavior. On the other hand, fecal matter transplantation from the German-free Swiss mice to the Bulb C mice resulted in an increase in exploratory behavior and levels of brain-derived neurotrophic factor, abbreviated BDNF, which is a growth factor that stimulates synaptogenesis and neurogenesis and promotes neuronal survival. These findings were noted independent of autonomic nervous system, GI neurotransmitter, and inflammatory influence, suggesting that the gut microbiota may influence behavior independently. In a study conducted by Palma and colleagues in 2017, germ-free mice were colonized with fecal microbiota from either healthy control individuals or diarrheic irritable bowel syndrome patients with or without comorbid anxiety. The researchers found that mice receiving microbiota from the IBS patients had increased gastrointestinal transit time, intestinal barrier dysfunction, innate immune activation, and increased anxiety-like behavior. These findings draw an interesting link between GI microbiota, irritable bowel syndrome, and anxiety disorders. In a study conducted by Kelly and colleagues in 2016, fecal matter transplant from a depressed patient to microbiota-depleted rats resulted in increased anhedonic-like behavior, anxiety-like behavior, intestinal transit time, and levels of C-reactive protein. These findings demonstrate a connection between depressive behavior and the microbiome. 
The use of probiotics and prebiotics have been examined in patients with anxiety and depression. In this systematic review and meta-analysis of five randomized controlled trials conducted by Huang and colleagues in 2016, it was found that one study concluded that probiotics significantly improved depression scores in participants versus placebo, while the other four concluded that there's a possible role in reducing the risk of depression in non-depressed participants with the use of probiotics. In this systematic review and meta-analysis of 34 randomized controlled trials by Liu and colleagues in 2019, it was found that the use of prebiotics did not differ from placebo for depression or anxiety. However, probiotics did yield a small but significant effect for depression and anxiety. These findings suggest general support for the antidepressant and anxiolytic effects of probiotics, but further randomized controlled trials are needed in order to fully evaluate their therapeutic potential. So here are some key implications of the dysbiosis hypothesis. One, it explains the co-occurrence of GI-related comorbidities with psychiatric conditions. Two, GI problems can create stress and anxiety, or stress and anxiety can make GI problems worse. Three, experiencing emotion, for instance nervousness or excitement, may impact the digestive system. Four, it supports the benefit of healthy rest, digestion, exercise, relaxation, and a nutritional diet, as well as healthy perinatal and maternal practices. Five, there's a possible place for probiotics, but we need further research. And six, there's a possible role for fecal matter transplantation in the treatment of certain psychiatric conditions. Here are my references, and for more information, including downloadable notes, content, and packages, please visit my website, nurse-doctor.com. Thank you for listening.